Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today with what should be the penultimate episode of the Random Card Challenge. After beating Koga and Blaine to earn our 6th and 7th badges, we've returned to Verdian City to challenge Giovanni for our 8th and final gym badge. Before getting started though, we need a team. Giovanni's got 5 Pokemon and his team is one of the worst of any final gym leader's team. If Mr. Briny can show up with Pico and sweep your entire gym, you're probably not worthy of being the final test before the Elite Four. Imagine Giovanni just had Mewtwo, Persian, Kingler, Machamp, Golem, and Rhydon. A more accurate representation of his anime team. Even if you take away Mewtwo, that would still be a much more interesting team and it would probably give Pico a bit of trouble. Oh yeah, before this one we added anything available on the Sevi Islands, and I think that was it. Just Ponyta, Rapidash, and Magmar. Okay, I know I'm gonna get a bit sidetracked here, but did you all know that Magmar's Japanese name is Boober? <laughs> If you did, why didn't you tell me? That's amazing. Not as amazing as his Cantonese and Mandarin names, though. Okay, you're gonna have to forgive me for butchering these two wonderful and unique languages, but in Cantonese, Magmar's name is Na Pyu Fo Long, and in Mandarin, its name is Yazu Yulong, both of which mean duck-billed fiery dragon. I think I'm gonna change my name to that. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is Duck-billed Fiery Dragon. It has a nice ring to it. Anyway, back to whatever this is. See, I, I really can't be trusted to stick to the narrative of a video. This is why my unscripted stuff is so all over the place. At all times, my brain is thinking about like 40 different things, and once you start pulling on one of the threads, you end up down a rabbit hole with the words Duck Build Fiery Dragon and Boober. Okay, let's draw a team before this stops being a random card challenge video entirely. For the battle with Giovanni, we're going to be using Spiro, Ponyta, Primate, Weezing, and Marowak. That should be more than good enough. A water type would have been nice, but I can't see this one being much of a challenge. This is where our team's at for the final Kanto Gym battle. Marowak's at level 50 with Bone Meringue, Leer Thrash, and Bone Rush. For some reason, when I just read Bone Meringue, it made me think of like an awful dessert, like a Bone Meringue instead of a Bone Boomerang. Maybe that's what they meant. I don't think it was though. I'm getting very off track. Back to the team. Our Ponyta is at level 42 and has the moves Fire Blast, Agility, Stomp, and Takedown. Primate's at level 44 and he's got Cross Chop, Screech, Swagger, and Seismic Toss. At level 45, we've got Weezing with Sludge, Smokescreen, Smog, and Explosion. And our final team member is Spiro, who's level 45 with the moves Fly, Leer, Agility, and Drill Pack. Okay, I don't see this being too tough. Let's get into it. We send out Marowak first, and Giovanni leads off with his lower level Rhyhorn. After missing his first two attacks and getting his speed harshly lowered by a couple of scary faces, Marowak is hit by an earthquake, but his high defense means it barely registers. Bone Marang finally connects, and the impact as it returns to Marowak knocks out Rhyhorn and gives us the first win of the match. The Team Rocket leader sends out his Duck Trio next, and while Marowak's gaze is locked on the three fingertips protruding above the earth, the hand below the ground thrashes around, causing another earthquake. That doesn't do too much to hurt Marowak though, and once again Bone Marang scores a knockout and takes Giovanni down to 3. Nidoqueen's up next, and we just run that last turn back. Marowak gets hit by an earthquake that hurts him a little, but then fires back with an Osteopavlova that one-shots another opponent. For the fourth matchup of the battle, Nidoking comes out, and this time we switch things up ever so slightly. After the Poison Ground type shakes up the already broken battlefield to deal some damage, Marowak changes his plan of attack and uses Bone Rush. What doesn't change is the result. With yet another one-shot, we leave the Viridian Gym Leader with just a single Pokemon remaining. His level 50 Rhyhorn is sent in, and I really thought the Earthquake would knock out Marowak, so I just chose to attack again. Marowak ended up living on 2 HP, and 3 hits of Bone Rush wiped out Rhyhorn to give us the win. I was planning to use my whole team, but Giovanni was just too terrible. This is the first time that I failed to use every member of my team in a battle, and I actually only ended up using one. I didn't even get lucky here. Marowak missed his first two attacks and still cut through Giovanni's team with sufficient ease. I considered running this one back to use my whole team, but I think this is more in line with what Giovanni deserves. Now that we've acquired eight Kanto Gym Badges, we can make our way to the Pokemon League, but we've got one final roadblock before we can head for the last leg of our journey. Gary stands in our way on Route 22, bringing us all the way back to the rival battle we had in Episode 1. This time he's put together a formidable team of six, and if we don't get a decent team, this could be the end for us. Okay, let's draw our team. It looks like we're going to be using Onyx, 
Tangela, Dugong, Kadabra, Magnemite, and Slowpoke. If I'm not mistaken, I think that could be an entirely new team. Although it is entirely possible that I'm completely wrong. That happens a lot. What I know for sure is that this is an excellent team as far as this card stack's capabilities go. I think we can win this, but even with a good team, this one's going to be tough. Let's have a quick look at the team in-game. Starting with one of my all-time favourite Pokemon, Dugong. I'm not sure I've ever mentioned this on the channel, but since I first discovered Pokemon as like a 4 or 5 year old, something about Dugong's design has really appealed to me. It's just so clean. I absolutely love it. Anyway, he's level 45 with the move Surf, Rest, Aurora Beam and Sheer Cold. Tangle is up next, also at 45 with Mega Drain, Growth, Stun Spore and Vine Whip. Onyx is level 47 and she's got Dragon Breath, which is apparently a level up move for Onyx. Screech, Rock Throw and Iron Tail. Magnemite's our second level 47 with the move Spark, Supersonic, Screech and Thunder Wave. Slowpoke is matching Venusaur's level at 53 and her moveset consists of Headbutt, Surf, Psychic and Amnesia. Finally, we've got Kadabra at level 45 with Psychic, Recover, Reflect, and Psybeam. Let's give this a try. Gary, as ever, leads off with his Pidgeot, and we send out Dugong for starters. I'm not entirely sure where he's at on this path. Maybe he's in the water, but that's a fair bit away from where we started the battle. Maybe he's just flopping about on the path. Wherever he is, Pidgeot cracks him with a wing attack before he sends an Aurora Beam back, which crits to one-shot the bird Pokemon. I have no idea why, but our rival chooses to send in his Rhyhorn next, so Dugong just starts flopping around. That summons a crashing wave that washes the ground and rock type off the path, leaving his eyes spiralling in the grass. Venusaur is up next, and although Dugong manages to land a couple of Aurora Beams, our rival starter knocks him out with Razor Leaf to get his battle back on track. We send Kadabra in, and a single Psychic finishes off Venusaur, leaving Gary with only three Pokemon. Gyarados comes out, but all he manages to do is one Rain Dance. Kadabra puts him down with Psychic and we're really in complete control now. Growlithe makes a brief cameo where he appears for a matter of seconds before Kadabra one-shots him with Psychic. At this point, Gary has one Pokemon remaining and we've got five Pokemon all at full health. Unfortunately, that final Pokemon is Alakazam and we still need to use our full team. I definitely couldn't neglect that goal in two consecutive battles. We switch out to Tangela and Alakazam uses Calm Mind, which is a little scary, followed by Future Sight. The Grass type paralyzes him with Stun Spore, but Synchronize leaves Tangela paralyzed too. We got to Slowbro, but after taking one Psychic on switching, she gets outsped by a paralyzed Pokemon and gets knocked out as a result. Honestly, she kinda deserved that. If you can't outspeed a paralyzed Pokemon, you probably deserve to lose your matchup. Magnemite's up next, and oh, there's Future Sight. This is getting a little worrying. We send in Onyx and Alakazam gives us an out by going for Future Sight instead of Psychic. Another Rock Throw is followed by a failed Future Sight and for some reason after launching another stone at the Psychic type's face, Gary tells him to use Future Sight again. I don't think he entirely understands how that move works. Future Sight finally arrives but Onyx survives the attack and uses Dragon Breath to finish off Alakazam and win us the battle. If Gary had been smart about this, I'm not sure we would have beaten him. It would have come down to Kadabra versus Alakazam, and I doubt we would have come out on top. Luckily, Gary's idiocy handed us the win, and now we're ready to head through Victory Road to the Pokemon League to take on the Elite Four. Quite a few people have asked how I'm going to go through the Elite Four and Champion, and the answer is pretty simple. We're going to draw separate teams for everyone and just do lots of reloading old saves. I drew the remaining teams a couple of weeks ago, just in case we made it this far, and I'm planning to do the entire Pokemon League in one video, which will take a bit longer than usual, so I'm going to show you the teams we drew now. Also, it means I don't have to worry about losing the footage, because that seems like something I'd do. Okay, let's get started with Lorelei. The Ice-type member of the Elite Four has a team of five, made up of Dugong, Jinx, Slowbro, Cloyster, and Lapras. In my opinion, she's probably the hardest trainer to beat in this entire game if you're on par regarding levels. We're going to need a really good team for this one. Oh god. So, it looks like we'll have the team of Venonat, Rhyhorn, Dratini, Goldeen, and Lickitung. I was really hoping we'd get a fighting type or maybe an electric type. Rhyhorn does have super effective moves against Ice types, but four of Lorelei's five team members have quite effective moves against it. Even Jinx's Ice Punch is super effective, so not ideal. I've got a bad feeling about this one. 
on the off chance we actually beat Lorelei, here are the teams we're going to have to use. With two Rock Snakes and three Angry Boys, I'm not too worried about Bruno. His team is good, but I think he's very beatable. Let's see what we'll have going for us. Wow, okay, Rhydon and Pidgeot for starters is amazing. Not the best battle for Rhydon, but drawing two fully evolved Pokemon is basically a miracle in this series. Seedra, Poliwag, and Meowth fill out the team, and I'm much more confident about this one than I am about Lorelei. Let's move on to Agatha. The sorta ghost type member of the Elite Four has a team made up of five poison types, and honestly, when are they gonna give us an old style Pokemon game? Like, you're in Kanto, and Agatha and Oak are your rivals, and the Pokedex doesn't exist yet, so you're just charting Pokemon that haven't been discovered in, like, a notebook or something. I don't know when or where the gyms in the Elite Four are established, so they don't even need to be in the game. Maybe there's just a random battle tournament that you need to qualify for, and this is all just off the top of my head, and I'm just thinking about that flashback Oak from the Celebi movie with his Charmander. Nope, Charmeleon. Imagine using the old-style Pokeballs. I mean, I'm sure there would be something to do. Somebody get on that. Anyway, let's draw our team to face off against Agatha. So, it looks like we'll be using Executor, Zubat, Poliwhirl, Starmie, and Pikachu. This is another good team. Other than Lorelei, we're getting very lucky so far. Okay, I'm pretty worried about this last Elite Four team. We're drawing another team of five for our face-off with Lance, and it needs to be a really good one. His team of dragons is pretty formidable, and there aren't many ice types in this deck for me to draw. Okay, our team is going to be made up of Omanyte, Goldeen again, Tentacruel, okay, Spiro, and Weedle. Hmm, I mean, Lance probably won't be expecting to see a Weedle. That's something. I did say that this challenge was going to ramp up in difficulty towards the end. There's still one team to go though. Our rival has beaten us through the Elite Four and become champions, so we've got to have one last 6 on 6 battle and with a seriously powerful team in front of us, we need some luck here. I was so happy when I drew this team because it was such a perfect representation of the series with Bellsprout and Raticate, and then like a week later I found the shiny Ghastly. We're going to be using Bellsprout, Abra, Ghastly, Raticate, Hitmonchan, and Magikarp. That means if we reach the champion, we're going to get to use both of our shinies. When I found the shiny Ghastly, I thought about redrawing this team because it seems so fake now, but this was genuinely the team that came out. I don't want to change it because I think this is going to be really difficult, but maybe just about possible. Anyway, there are our teams for the Elite Four and Champion. I wanted to get those out there just to answer the question of what I was going to do. I've only recorded up to that rival battle with Gary, I have not started the Elite Four yet, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. I think Lorelei is going to be seriously tough, and Lance too probably. Anyway, next time will be the finale, and it may take a while, but hopefully won't be too far away. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.